Hey yo! How's it going? My name is James the Abstract Marcher, and today I am talking about an EDH deck. Without further ado, it's Cats and Taxes, with Giselle Goldmane as the commander. Now, most people would go and say, James, why aren't you using Brimaz? Or Kemba Ka? Or Splash Green and go Arbo? I have Arbo. It's right here. I just haven't had an opportunity to tool around with it and see how to best utilize the eminence ability. So I figure go the dummy route and go just mono white and see how things work out. But let's read Giselle Goldmane because he is not a very known commander. He is two and two white for a legendary creature cat warrior with first strike. He also has the ability of pay three generic and two white attacking creatures you control get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of attacking creatures he is a four four base power and toughness so with jazal he needs a very large supporting cast i wanted to solely focus on cats the cats portion of cats and taxes have to start out with a johnny's pride mate 2-2 two, two for 2, Cat Soldier, with whenever you gain life, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. With Johnny's Sunstriker, a 2-2 two, two for 2 with Lifelink. Alms Collector, a 4-mana 3-4 with Flash. If an opponent would draw 2 or more cards instead, you and that player each draw a card. Blade of the Sixth Pride, Brimaz, King of Oreskos. Brimaz has Vigilance and is a 3-4. Whenever Brimaz, King of Oreskos attacks, put a 1-1 Cat Soldier creature token with Vigilance onto the battlefield attacking. When Brimaz blocks a creature, put a 1-1 Cat Soldier creature token with Vigilance onto the battlefield blocking that creature. Charmed Stray. A 1-mana one 1-1 one, one, Cat with Lifelink and whenever Charmed Stray enters the battlefield, Put a 1-1 counter on each other creature you control named Charmed Stray. Enlightened Ascetic, a 2-mana 1-1 Cat Monk. When Enlightened Ascetic enters the battlefield, you may destroy target enchantment. Garrison Cat, a 1-mana 1-1 Cat Creature with When Garrison Cat Dies, create a 1-1 White Human Soldier Creature Token. Healer of the Pride, a 4-mana 2-3 Cat Cleric with Whenever another creature enters the battlefield, under your control, you gain 2 life. Leonin Arbiter, a 2 mana 2 2 cat cleric with players can't search libraries. Any player may pay 2 generic to ignore this effect. Leonin Relic Warder, a 2 mana 2 2 cat cleric with when Leonin Relic Warder enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. When Leonin Relic Warder leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Leonin Shikari, a 2 mana 2 2 cat creature soldier with you may play equip abilities at any time you can play an instant. Leonin Skyhunter, a 2 mana 2 2 cat knight with flying. Maned Serval, a 2 mana 1 4 cat with vigilance. Metallic Mimic, a 2 mana 2 1 artifact creature shapeshifter with as Metallic Mimic enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Metallic Mimic is the chosen type in addition to its other types. Each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Oreskos Explorer, a two mana two two cat scout with when Oreskos Explorer enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X plane cards, where X is the number of players who control more lands than you. Reveal those cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Pride Guardian, a one mana zero three cat monk creature with defender, and whenever Pride Guardian blocks, you gain 3 life. Regal Caracal, a 5 mana 3-3 three, three cat. Other cats you control get plus 1 plus 1 and have lifelink. When Regal Caracal enters the battlefield, create 2 one, 1 white cat creature tokens with lifelink. Savai Sabertooth, a 2 mana 3-1 cat. Silver Coat Lion, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two cat. Sky Hunter Skirmisher, a 3 mana 1-1 one, one flying double strike cat knight. Stalking Leonin, a 3 mana 3-3 three, three cat archer with, when Stalking Leonin enters the battlefield, secretly choose an opponent. 
Reveal that player you chose. Exile target creature that's attacking you if it's controlled by the chosen player. This ability can only be activated once. Sunspear Shikari. A 2 mana 2 2 cat soldier with as long as Sunspear Shikari is equipped, it has first strike and lifelink. Vanguard of Brimaz. A 2 mana 2 2 cat soldier with vigilance and heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Vanguard of Brimaz, put a 1 1 cat soldier creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield. White Main Lion. A 2 mana 2 2 cat with flash and, whenever White Main Lion enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. That was a lot. So, aside from the cats, what else can we do with this deck? Well, there is a couple of different things. Obviously, with the taxes sub theme, it's to try and get yourself as best of an opportunity to attack your opponents as often as you possibly can and prevent them from being able to do stuff as easily. What is the supporting cast of characters in this band of misfits? Well, a card I literally just found just before recording this, Archangel of Thune, which I did not realize was $34 at the time of recording. Archangel of Thune, a five mana three four angel with flying and lifelink. And whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Soul Warden, a one mana one one human cleric with whenever another creature enters the battlefield, you gain one life. Containment Priest, a two mana two two human cleric with flash if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. Imposing Sovereign. A 2 mana 2 1 human creature with creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. There are two planeswalkers in the deck. A Johnny Caller of the Pride and Elspeth Knight Errant. A Johnny Caller of the Pride. 3 mana, 4 loyalty planeswalker, plus 1. Put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature. Negative 3. Target creature gains flying and double strike until end of turn. Negative 8. Put X 2-2 two, two white cat creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is your life total. With Johnny being in the deck, he's basically provide support and help the creatures. The negative 8 is really, really solid. That is basically a kind of beefier version of White Sun Zenith. So it's good to have two of these in the deck. Elspeth Knight Errant. Four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker. Her plus one states, put a one one white soldier creature token onto the battlefield. The other plus one says, target creature gets plus three plus three and gains flying until end of turn. And her ultimate is negative eight. You get an emblem with artifacts, creatures, enchantments, and lands you control are indestructible. Elspeth provides token generation, beefing up a creature, and the emblem, which is really solid. The taxes sub theme with Containment Priest and Leon and Arbiter, and at one point in Juncture, I actually had Thalia Guardian of Thraben in here, along with Pacifism, Rest in Peace, Ghostly Prison. Three mana for an enchantment that says, Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. Norn's Annex. A five mana, three generic, two white Phyrexian for an artifact that says, Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays either a white or Phyrexian mana for each of those creatures. Authority of the Consoles. A one mana enchantment. Creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. I have gained a bunch of life off of this when someone forgot to pay attention to Authority of the Consoles, did not have a way to blow it up, and I ended up getting like hundreds of life because they tried to go infinite. Condemn. One minute instant. Put target attacking creature on the bottom of its owner's library. Its controller gains life equal to its toughness. Divine Reckoning. Four mana for a sorcery that states, each player chooses a creature he or she controls, destroy the rest. Flashback seven. Cataclysm. Four mana sorcery. Each player chooses from among the permanents they control an artifact, creature, enchantment, and a land, then sacrifices the rest. 
Wrath of God, a four mana sorcery that states, destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. Pacifism, a two mana enchantment that says, enchant creature, enchanted creature can't attack or block. Seal of Cleansing, a two mana enchantment that says, sacrifice seal of cleansing, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Blossoming Calm is basically a mini Leyline of Sanctity. The life gain helps too, and the rebound is pretty nice. Guardian's Pledge is to buff up your board, especially if you're trying to bring in the last point of damage. Holy Day is a Fog. Light of Hope is a modal ability to be able to choose different things. Make a Stand is another way to put through the last points of damage that you need. Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares deal with troublesome creatures. Raise the Alarm is token generation. Revitalize is life gain and draws a card. The draws a card is really, really clutch because there's not really many ways to draw cards in white. Take Heart is a really, really solid buff spell for one creature and also a life gain, life gain element for the life gain portion of this deck. Obviously, you could put it through early, but with Archangel Foon, that would be really, really solid and really, really good. And then White Sun Zenith is token generation and it shuffles into your library. So you can do it again sometime later on down the road. Onto the artifacts of the deck. Angel's Feather, because we're playing a bunch of white spells, this is essential, especially again, life gain sub theme. Cold Steel Heart, this should really be Arcane Signet. I'm just saying that now. Herald's Horn, it helps reduce the cost of creatures. You know, cannot complain about that. Obvious Soul Ring. Traveler's Amulet for land fixing. And that's the artifacts. Enchantments. Now, here's a biggie. A Johnny's Welcome, one mana enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Always watching, three mana enchantment. Non-token creatures you control get plus one plus one and have vigilance. Cathar's Crusade, five mana enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Uh, another great way for being able to buff your board, especially late game. Glorious Anthem, a three mana enchantment that says creatures you control get plus one plus one. Honor the Pure, specifically for white creatures. Radiant Destiny, a three mana enchantment with Ascend. If you control 10 or more permanents, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. As Radiant Destiny enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control have the chosen type, get plus one plus one. As long as you have the city's blessing, they also have vigilance. Rest in peace for graveyard shenanigans. For it being budget, 36 lands, Command Tower, Evolving Wilds, Remote Farm, Terramorphic Expanse. Uh, the Remote Farm is a recent addition, just because I had one on hand. You can easily just slot in a uh, Nether Plains or something else. Notable additions that I can think of would be Fabled Passage, Prismatic Vista, Chromatic Sphere and Star, as well as also Expedition Map, and the White Fetch Lands. Those would be easy additions to the deck to be able to help it out in regards to mana fixing, card draw, and trying to find answers. Now, in my considering folder, I have Chivalric Alliance, Griff Spoon, Ivory Mask, and Smothering Tithe. Uh, Smothering Tithe, that's if you want to make treasure after treasure after treasure. Chivalric Alliance, this definitely would help, especially for card draw. That's why it's a $10 card right now. Griff Spoon, um, it's pretty solid. Pretty much only if you want to give one thing flying, but it's not too bad. Can't really complain for $200 or just under. Like I said, if you want to, you can easily get rid of Archangel Floon and Cathar's Crusade and make this a heck of a lot more budget. If you really, really wanted to go even cheaper, obviously get rid of the foils. Just have, you know, 36 planes and go to town. But all in all, not bad. I really enjoy the deck. It's fun. It's silly, and it, it's unexpected for a lot of people. It's a fun deck, can be improved a lot. Like I said earlier, Arbo. If you want to splash green, 
and really go into uh, causing shenanigans. This was my look at Jazal Thundercats, my cats and taxes deck. If you have any suggestions or ways to improve the deck, leave a comment, uh, like, share, subscribe. Anything will help. I try to update my decks as much as I possibly can, as well as also try and as best put them into my play style or ways that I feel I play best. It, it's all in the matter of fun. And that's the biggest thing at the end of the day is having fun, enjoying the game and just making memories. That's the big thing for me with this. I'm going to try and keep pumping out more content in the coming months. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or X if you want to go there. Threads, Blue Sky, Moxfield, and here on YouTube. Take care and have a good one. Peace.